Good afternoon, everybody. It's Elaine Lindsay of Business Banter Plus, and I'm here with the lovely Melanie Dodaro. I want to uh, welcome you to the show. Hi, Melanie. Thanks very much for being here. Hi, Elaine. It's good to see you uh, out on the West Coast, another Canadian. Very nice to have you. I want to uh, give you guys just a sort of a quick rundown because there's so much about Melanie, we'd have to do a five-hour show, I think, to touch on everything. <laughs> so I'm just going to start with the fact that she's Canada's number one LinkedIn expert. Uh, she founded her company, Top Dog Social Media, with the vision of helping business owners and professionals master the often confusing world of social media marketing. Isn't that the truth? Uh, she's received a number of awards, uh, Best Online Marketer 2013, their top finalists for Small Business BC, the Best Social Marketing Media Marketing Company for 2012 by Promotion World, kudos to you, and the top 24 social media blogs in 2012 from Social Media Examiner. Those are just a few things that I'll touch on. I will also say that Melanie is a wonderful speaker. I was lucky enough to share the stage with her in Las Vegas at the Big Social Summit last October. And she's also done Social Media Camp Victoria, uh, TOTA, which is the Thompson Okanagan Tourism Association, and is going to be one of the speakers on the Big social cruise coming up in September, uh, heading off to Alaska. Welcome. As I said before, it's wonderful to have you here, Melanie. I just want to talk to you about your passions. And before we get into that, I want to say to people, Melanie's had a really interesting road to get to where she is now. So I think you're going to find this a really interesting interview. It's been not only an interesting road, a very painful road. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know? Well, like it is for, I'm sure, many business owners that are just overwhelmed and confused. That was me six years ago, uh, completely overwhelmed, completely confused, kind of coming into this online world. And uh, I've had a lot of very expensive lessons along the way, <laughs> a lot of pain along the way. <laughs> yeah, isn't so, that what they say, that the magic comes out of the pain? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish it would have been a little less expensive, though. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So take us on a tour of Melanie and how you got here. Yeah, so... Um, for most of my life, I've been an entrepreneur. So I used to own a number of different businesses. Uh, they were all brick and mortar businesses. And I, um, in 2007, I wrote a book. And at the same time, um, most of my family lived out in the Toronto area, and I had moved out to BC in 2004. So I don't know if most people know this, but back, I don't know what, what the stats are today in terms of demographics, but in 2007, Toronto was the number one city per capita in the world for Facebook users. So all my family was on it, and they kept saying, Mel, you've got to get on this Facebook. I'm like, what in the world is this stupid Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> and I was very, very anti-social media. I was also a very, very private person. And I never wanted to um, be in the public eye in any way. I, I didn't even want anything online about me. And this comes back from, you know, my younger years. I had a, a difficult situation when I was in my early 20s with a stalker and stuff like that. So I was such a private, private person. And when I got on Facebook, I only allowed my family and, like, my best friends to be my friends. Anybody else that would send me a friend request, I'd hit deny, ignore, <laughs> block whatever. And it was a couple months in that I started to really uh, see the business opportunity that was available on Facebook. I didn't know what it looked like yet, but I saw the opportunity. Yeah. And uh, having been an entrepreneur for so long, my mind always thinks business. And so I started kind of playing with it. I thought this might be a great platform for me to promote my book. You know, having a ton of experience in owning businesses and lots of marketing experience with traditional marketing, TV, radio, newspaper, all that, I knew that that wasn't going to be a viable uh, solution for promoting a $20 book. Yeah. So I thought, wow, maybe this online 
mind stuff is going to work. <laughs> anyway, so it set me on my journey to learn absolutely everything that I could about online marketing and social media, and it was a very painful journey. Um, I, I'm a very non-techie person, so uh, people assume because I know social media that I'm techie, and in fact, I guess today I'm probably a hundred times more techie than I was six years ago, but yeah. I'm still not a techie person. <laughs> So, and as Elaine knows, this is my first Google Hangout because this is a little too techy for me. <laughs> and you've done today. really well getting in and everything. So. But after today, that will probably all change. So, um, as I was learning and going through this process of, of, of paying a whole bunch of different people to coach and mentor me and, and attending seminars and reading books and all that, um, bang my head against the wall over and over and over again waste money, uh, you know, it was just a big long process because the thing is, is not a lot of people really understood how to use social media for business at that time. So and my big question was, how do you use social media profitably, right? Not just properly, yeah. but profitably. And uh, it took me three years to figure out that answer. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So after I figured out the answer, uh, I started having a lot of business owners contacting me and saying, hey, Melanie, I just love what you're doing on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever, can you give me some pointers? I'm like, absolutely, of course I can. And I was giving away free advice left and right and I loved it. I re really loved it. And I was like, wow, I think I had a little bit of a passion shift here. It might be time for a change. And so that's how my company Top Dog Social Media got started. Awesome. So it was uh, quite an evolution. Well, it is. as. As we, we know, once we really get passionate about social, it, it really does turn everything else on its head. Yeah, and see, you know, I'm, I'm a little different than I think most of the social media people out there. I don't really love uh, the social aspect of social media. Like yeah. in terms of, you know, I don't spend tons of time on it each day talking and playing and stuff like that. I'm really much more focused and diligent in how I use it. And of course I am social on it. And of course I do, you know, communicate, build relationships on it. But I really look at it more from a business perspective and try not to waste a lot of time because social media can be a huge time suck. Oh, absolutely. People, if you play games at all, not a gamer, I just don't have the coordination for it, thank God, because it, it really does absolutely suck time. Yeah, I mean, I've never downloaded any of those uh, different things on Facebook, the Farmville and all these different games Ooh. that you play. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything against people that like it and use it for that kind of enjoyment. It's just for me, it's not, it's not there. And that's what actually really got me interested in LinkedIn. Right. Because I always say to people that I'm a business owner first. I'm an entrepreneur first and a social media person second. Right. So I look at everything through business eyes. And that's what attracted me to me to LinkedIn because it's all business. People aren't talking about what they have for lunch. You know, they're not playing yeah. games, but yeah. it's all business, right? So I'm it just it, it gravitated to my personality style. And I also, you know, see a lot more results in it for, you know, the types of clients that I work with mm -hmm. and, of course, for myself. So it's been really great for that. Um, I think that there's great aspects to all the different social networks that are out there. And I think that they all have their place mm -hmm. and they're all a little different. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as, as we both know, you, you go where your audience is. And, yes. and, you know, for different people, that's definitely different platforms. The one thing that I have found out in the latest surveys and information is it's almost become a faux pas to not be on LinkedIn. If you're a professional, you need to be on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Bottom line. And not only be on LinkedIn, but have a great presence. Exactly. Because it's your professional presence. And, I, and one of the things that I say to people a lot is, you know, if you're a professional, if you're you know, a professional services person where your business is you. You're not a restaurant or a carpet cleaner or something like that. Your business is you. People are going to do Google searches. And Absolutely. LinkedIn has really powerful Google indexing, as does Google+. Yeah. And so your LinkedIn profile shows up at the top of the search results. So it's often your very first impression. So yeah. I always say to people, are you happy with the first impression that you're making online right now? Does it look good? Does it convey the message that you want to convey? Does it attract the clients that you want? Yeah, and, and I think that's that's a really good point. Uh, something I also uh, just read actually was 
all of the Fortune 500 companies, every single one of them are now on LinkedIn, and 83% of all top-level decision makers use LinkedIn first. Yeah, which I think is incredible. Well, the other thing about, there's a couple of things that are really great about LinkedIn. One is that uh, people are two times more likely to trust what they read on LinkedIn than any other social event net network. And it's four times more effective for B2B, so business to business. Absolutely. Get Facebook or Twitter. So yeah, it's, it, you know, it depends, again, you know, who is your market. If, if you're a restaurant or a retail store, you know, Facebook and Twitter are definitely, you know, great options. But if you're B2B or you're a professional of any kind, um, LinkedIn is definitely a place that not only do you need to be there, you need to look great there and you need to spend some time there. Uh, and I think that's a really important point. It's not enough to be there. Right. Um, I have actually counseled people that, that are restaurants. After uh, we were together in Las Vegas, I decided that, that it was really, really important that I take everything you had offered us, which was quite a bit, and really not just implement it for myself, but like you, I, I just love to help other people. As you know, I... I'm forever Google Plusing everybody wherever I go. But uh, I had spoken to some restaurateurs and basically said, this is a great way for you to be contacting your suppliers. Make sure that you're connected to the people that you uh, circulate with, that are you know, important to your restaurant. Uh, you know, pool owners, all of these people have the ability to connect to their suppliers and not just worry about getting like your customer, but being in touch with those that you need to be in touch with. That is your primary area is definitely LinkedIn. Yeah, that's a great point, Lane, because you know, a lot of people think that they should just use it to attract customers, but there's some other reasons that you might might want to be on some of these platforms, LinkedIn in particular. So for example, you know, when I'm consulting with a B2C, a business to consumer type client, um, I'm saying, you know, LinkedIn can still be a good source for you, but it's okay. gonna be used a little differently. Yeah. So there, you know, there's some different things that you might use it for. Um, you know, for even some, for some of the B2B people, I'll talk about here's some other ways that you can be using it. Don't just use it to find clients. Use it to find strategic alliances. Use it to build relationships with potential referral partners. If you're a financial advisor, for example, search and networking can with lawyers and accountants that can refer business your way, you know, and uh, it's great. So for me, I use it for a number of different things. I connect with uh, different people for, you know, speaking opportunities. Absolutely. I can people that are potential uh, joint venture partners for me that, you know, we might want to do some reciprocal stuff. They promote one of my courses. I promote one of theirs. Absolutely. You know, so there's a, tr a tremendous amount of opportunities that a lot of times are overlooked. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And there's a lot of, uh, now I'm finding bigger corporations are actually approaching people on LinkedIn to attend their conferences and much more than they ever were before and finding people through LinkedIn search. Yeah, yeah, and LinkedIn's got a tremendous advanced search tool that you can find, you know, pretty much anybody that you want to find in a specific geographic area, a specific type of uh, uh, company or industry. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's so many variables that are available to you. Some of them are through uh, paid membership, and others are available through the free membership. Yeah, and and there is there is quite a plethora of things available, even at the free level. Absolutely, which, which is really important, especially for very small business when their people are just starting out, brands are just beginning to be known. This yeah. is a really good way to put all your information out there, yeah. for sure. Um, something I wanted to you could probably expand on for people is exactly how to deal with your headline. This is something that's always, I, I see them and think, oh wow, wow, Melanie, take it away, because this, yeah, this is awesome. So one of the things that I always uh, say when I'm talking about LinkedIn, whether I'm doing a, you know, I'm speaking somewhere, or I'm doing a training, or a webinar, or whatever it is, is that your LinkedIn profile is the foundation for your success on LinkedIn. So you need to lay the foundation first. You need to choose the keywords that you want to be found for, right? And then you need to place them in various spots throughout your profile. So your headline is the most important part of your LinkedIn profile. The reason is, is if somebody's doing a search for, for what it is you offer on LinkedIn, this is a qualified, hot prospect 
looking for exactly what you offer. And if you're not showing up at the top of the search results, you're missing out on that opportunity. But here's the thing, even if you are showing up at the top of the search results, because you've optimized your profile, but the profile doesn't really speak to or engage or attract, still a lost opportunity. Mm -hmm. so your headline next to your photo and your name is the very first thing that people are gonna see. So your headline needs to be compelling. It needs to grab attention. And it also needs to incorporate one or two of your keywords in there. So instead of just, you know, a lot of people will have, if they're an owner or founder of a company, they'll put, I'm the owner and founder. Yeah. Or they might put, I'm owner or founder of XYZ company. Nobody cares about that. No, that's not what they're looking for, is it? No, so you need to be speaking to the actual needs um, and grab the attention of the people that can utilize and, and benefit from the services or the products that you offer. And so, um, you know, you're very limited in characters. You've got 120 characters with your headline. And so what you need to think about is how can I create a compelling, uh, attention-grabbing statement and incorporate one or two of my keywords. Now you can either incorporate the keywords right in that compelling statement or you can put them at the tail end of it as long as they're there because uh, there's several sections within a LinkedIn profile that are weight weighted heavily in LinkedIn's algorithm, meaning who's going to show up at the top of the search results for us non techy people? Are you yeah. algorithm? That was really well said. Well I said. Know. It's so funny. I have a 25-year-old son, and he used to make fun of me all the time because he just thought I was just a complete moron. <laughs> I didn't know how to do anything with my computer. If something changed, I would be freaking out and getting him to fix it. And, uh, <laughs> and then as the years went by and I started studying this stuff, he would still talk to me like I was a moron. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'd start talking over his head, and he'd be like, "What? I'm more advanced than him now." Yeah. <laughs> Don't you love when that happens? <laughs> yeah, I have a 31-year-old one of those who used to think he was way ahead, but uh, I'm I'm slightly more techie than you, I would say. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he was a gamer from way back, so it's nice to surpass them once in a while That's to let them know you're you're still viable. <laughs> Yeah. He's like, really? Did you just say that? <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. Well, something that actually ties into that, and it's um, it's not specific to LinkedIn, but when you're found on Google um, in search, you should really have a description that's about twelve or thirteen words, so that it fits. Uh, with Google Plus and authorship, you actually have a little more space now. But keeping that in mind, that headline on LinkedIn is a bang on prospect for what you want in your description. Yeah, and here's the other thing too, is sometimes, and you can't control this, because this is now we're talking about Google, yes. but sometimes your LinkedIn profile will show up on page one of uh, Google when somebody's searching for the keywords that are within your LinkedIn profile. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And and that, that was part of, I, I was, looking about six months ago at, at the headlines after we had talked and changed a few things and I realized that within that 12 or 13 word capacity the headline would fit very well and actually give you rather than having your sentence cut off or your description cut off it's really specific to who you are and what you do yeah and that's strictly for search there yeah, so the headline clearly is the most important part because it's what's going to make people click on your profile. Mm -hmm. Now, if they click on your profile and your profile looks like crap, you're going to lose them. Yeah, yeah. So you need to spend some time and, you know, write through your profile. One of the things that uh, is a huge misconception for most people is they think that their LinkedIn profile should be their online resume. Yeah. It's kind of the way it's been positioned, mm -hmm. which is absolutely true if you're a job seeker. Yes. If you're a job yes. seeker, do it that way. But if you are using LinkedIn as a business building tool, you have to use it differently. Which means you have to speak to who your client is. I always say that your your LinkedIn profile should be client focused, not you focused. So when you go to my LinkedIn profile, you'll see about this much of me and the rest of it speaks this, yeah. to you know who I want to attract, right? Yeah. So it's really important to make sure that um, that it's really speaking to who you want to be attracting. Absolutely, absolutely, because you you really want to touch on those pain points so that it's very obvious to the clients that are requiring your services that you're the person for them. 
I would say that basically when somebody lands on your profile, if they are an ideal client, they should immediately be able to self-select. Absolutely. Say, ah, this is a person I need to connect with. This is yep. a person I need to talk to. Absolutely. This person can solve this very painful problem that I have right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's exa exactly my point. And and that making sure that your um, profile is complete, I think, is, is really important in LinkedIn. It's important in Google+. But for any business owner who really wants to make a good showing, wherever you are, wherever your audience is, that should also be complete. If it's not one of the big ones, then you need to apply that wherever else you are. Because I think this speaks to best practices. And, and that's important. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the completion of the pro, uh, profile is very important. And in LinkedIn, they actually have uh, a little uh, tool that will show you, you know, where you are along the uh, process. You yeah. are at 50%, 70%, 90%, 100%. I always say that when you're at 100% in LinkedIn's eyes, you're at 40% in mine. Well said. Well yeah, said. because here's the thing. All you have to do is write your title and your company name, and you don't even need to fill out any description at all for you to have the, the, um, that part completed. But it's awesome. not completed. <clears throat> it's not telling anybody anything about you or what you offer or what you do. So uh, just because you've entered in those two fields means nothing. Good, good, and that, that's exactly the point I wanted to get to because often, yeah, when you see those things and you think, okay, I've done the bare minimum, it's not the bare minimum. It's do what you expect others to do if you were going to look for them. Yeah. Because yeah. if you put yourself in that mindset. No, absolutely. I literally will spend between eight and ten hours. Um, when somebody hires me to write a LinkedIn profile for them, I'll yeah. spend eight. To 10 hours. Combination of doing some research about who their ideal client is, what kind of language is important to them, what kind of problems are important to them, and really speak to and, and write it that way, as well as figure out you know, what are the right keywords, optimize every square inch of the profile, fill out every single section of the profile, almost to its capacity. So for example, in your summary section, it allows you to fill out, uh, you can put 2,000 characters in there. I usually max out those 2,000 characters. Yes. I usually write 3,000 characters and then I have to come back and, and edit then cut it, it back. Edit yeah. It out, edit it out. yeah, because uh, the more content you have in your LinkedIn profile, the more likely you are to show up. Absolutely. If you don't have enough content in there, you're not going to show up. That's so true. So very true. Mm -hmm. And uh, I. Let's go back to for one minute to um, noting that there is a very big difference between business owners on LinkedIn and job seekers on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean for a job seeker, a more resume style profile is suitable. As soon as that person gets a job, and if their job involves anything where you know networking with other people becomes important or building relationships with other people becomes important or finding potential clients or prospects, then they need to tweak it to start to speak to that. But if they're looking for a job, it's okay to have it resume kind of bio style because they don't have an ideal client they're trying to attract. They are trying to attract an ideal employer though. And so I, I don't very often do LinkedIn profiles for job seekers just simply because they usually can't afford me. Right, right. <laughs> They're unemployed, right? Uh, but I have done a few. And so what I'll do that's very different from what anybody else would do is I'll actually speak to the ideal employers that are looking to attract. And here's another super sneaky little ninja trick. I'll actually write the names of the companies that they want to work for in there. Oh, wow. I'll be like, wow. I'm seeking a position with, you know, these types of companies yeah. in these types of positions. So I'll optimize their profile for all of the different positions that they want to get filled for. So recently I did it for a hotel manager. Okay. Uh, he was uh, a very experienced hotel manager who, you know, the hotel he was working for got sold. He was in a position where he had to look for a new job. So I was like, okay, what are all the companies you want to work for? Yeah. And I would uh, incorporate all of those names and his thing. I'm like, what are all the different positions that they might be looking for? You could be a general manager, you could be a hotel manager, you could be a sales manager, you know what I mean? Operation, and so I incorporated yeah. all that into his profile. He found a job. Oh, that that's <laughs> excellent, Melanie. That's really, really good and, and very key. 
uh, because there are a lot of people out there that are looking for jobs and, and starting to understand just how viable and how important LinkedIn is for yes. them and that's that's really important yeah. let's let's move on to like a little broader in LinkedIn um, I'd like to get your impressions of groups mm. LinkedIn groups are gold mines right if you use them properly yeah so here's the thing is every single person that I know when I'm first talking to them they'll you know a lot of them will have joined groups so for example the financial advisor will have joined all of the financial advisor groups yeah. <laughs> The realtor will have joined all the realtor groups. Yeah. I'm like, no, you join groups based on where your ideal clients are. So if you are, you know, a local business within a city, you might want to join all the local uh, groups that are related to the city. Uh, if you have a specific type of client that you work with, you know, maybe you work with coaches and consultants, or speakers or trainers, or maybe you work with accountants, or maybe you work with professional services people, then join those groups. Yes. and start to interact and engage yeah. in those groups and provide value. That is the key. Provide value within these groups. Don't be a spammer. So much spam on social media. It's really, oh, it's really yeah. ridiculous. It's, um, it's very disappointing because it, over time, starts to get people to start to ignore more and more, right? It does. It does. I report everybody for spam. Thank you. I, I wanted I wanted to get your opinion on that. Yeah, I think I think it's important. And um, this is something I used to say to my parents a lot was, you know, if you go to a restaurant and the food is bad or the waitress was terrible or or you go to a store and you get shoddy merchandise, they can't fix the problem unless they know there's a problem. So if you don't report these people, we're just going to be more and more inundated with spam because Nobody's saying anything. Exactly. So no, I yeah. always report. Uh, there's a lot of people that will set up fake accounts. Yeah. Um, and some signs to look for is they'll have. Okay, so there was this happened last year where there was a plethora of this where there was very attractive, very beautiful women pictures yeah. uh, with you know sales what at Nike and they put these high end companies like uh -huh. IBM, Hewlett Packard. Apple, you know, all these big name companies, these really beautiful women pictures, there would be nothing in their con in their profile. Yeah. And so and it would be one after another after another. I would open up my LinkedIn profile and I'd have like a hundred uh, requests from all these things. And so yeah. literally I just went spam, 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 spam. Uh, because that's all they were. They weren't even real profiles. So Absolutely. Absolutely. And and that's that's another thing. Uh, there's now a new uh, the little templates that people, when you just click and connect, there's a new one. It's because you're a person I trust. Um, I, I'm almost at the point where I see that, and it's like, I'm sorry, I, I'm not going to connect with you because, A, you don't know me, and, and so why do you trust me? That makes no sense to me. My number one, my number one message to everybody when it comes to any kind of interaction or engagement on LinkedIn is personalize, personalize, personalize. Do not ever ever, ever use a default message through LinkedIn. Connection request, uh, recommendation request, anything. Always Absolutely. personalize your message. If you don't know that person and you want to connect with them for whatever reason, tell them. Say, hey, you know what, we haven't met yet, but I wanted to connect with you because of XYZ. And then also say, hey, listen, if you're not uh, comfortable with connecting, don't worry, just click ignore. Yeah. And let them know that, hey, you know, I want you to feel comfortable with this. If you're not, just click ignore. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, why I – mean, some people – see, the problem with LinkedIn is that a lot of people don't understand what it's for. It's a business social network. So a lot of people are very guarded with their LinkedIn profiles. They're like, I'm not letting – kind of like me six years ago with Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> know this person. I'm not connecting with this person. And what I always tell people is LinkedIn's not Facebook. Facebook's where you share your personal information. LinkedIn's where you're trying to grow your business. So it's okay to connect with strangers. Don't you know? You don't necessarily want to connect with, you know, people that might look shady or um, you know people that might look spammy or whatever. But if the person looks legit, they look you know professional and whatnot. There's no reason not to connect with them. Absolutely. Because here's the thing about LinkedIn is every time you make a connection, it's a win-win. So you and I connect on LinkedIn, Elaine. Now you are exposed to my very large 
network on LinkedIn that just massively increased your second and third level connections Absolutely. by millions and millions and millions. And however many people you have, it doesn't even matter, you've exposed me to your network and sec uh, yeah. second and third level connections. So we both helped each other by, by connecting. Absolutely. What people don't realize is that you only show up in a LinkedIn search when people are doing searches for what you offer if you're in the first, second, or third level network. Yeah. So if you have such a small network or you're restricting things, you're missing out on opportunities because yeah. you're not showing up in the search results. And and I say to people who are a bit hesitant or just starting out, if they, you know, bottom line, I think you need to have a minimum of 501 yes. in your network yeah. before you're going to be able to utilize this at all. Because it's that outreach, it's that amplification. Yes. That, you know, because you and I, we, we don't know. It could be, you know, your best friend's brother-in-law's second neighbor that, that wants to connect through how it works. Right. It, we don't know. It's not always the person that's connecting to us that wants to work with us. Oh, absolutely. I was actually just talking to a friend of mine today that, you know, also, Deb White. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, we were having a conversation on the phone, and, and she was talking about, you know, getting out and networking a little bit more for her business, and we were talking about uh, networking, and I was saying, you know, here's the thing about networking that people don't realize is, you know, when you're out and speaking to people, um, every single person you speak to doesn't have to be a prospect for you. No, but no. When you impress them with, you know, who you are and what you know, when they're speaking to somebody else that needs what you offer, they're going to remember you, and a perfect example is I just had a guy contact me yesterday who's a friend of a friend. Yeah. And the friend, who unfortunately has passed away, he passed away last year, my friend, who was a mutual friend of ours, but he had promoted me like crazy to this guy, mm -hmm. uh, who now just got hired in with a new company, <clears throat> and they were sitting down, having a meeting, the company owner and the key stakeholders within the company, and they were talking about, we need a social media presence, right. we should hire, <clears throat> and this friend of a friend of mine said, we need to hire you know, Melanie Dodaro from Top Dog Social Media. And he said, everybody in the in the meeting was like, oh, but I know a social media person. Oh, I know a social media person. Oh, I know a social media person. But he had such strong belief in me. And then what he did, it was funny, he said, I pulled up your website and I played your video and everybody just stopped talking. They're like, okay. <laughs> but you know, he, he sold me. He sold me and I had never even had a conversation with the owner. And then to this morning he called me, same guy, Melanie, I have a referral for you. Yeah. Somebody, uh, somebody in Calgary, uh, here's her phone number, contact her, she wants to hire you. Yeah. So other people can be great um, you know, promoters of you. And, and so many of these relationships I've created online, you can create them online, you can create them offline. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And, and that, that kind of brand advocacy is ideally where you're trying to go. Yeah. That is the point. You want your great customers to become your great brand advocates. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. And not even your customers. <clears throat> yeah, not even. Not your connections, shall your we say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously your customers are great because they've had a personal experience with you, but other people that know you yeah. and really kind of you know saw through you know who you were and, and the message that you had and saw a great uh, potential for you to help you know one of their friends or families or Workers or colleagues or business acquaintances or whatever, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I had the same thing happen. I met a woman at a networking event and we had talked and, and it was great, but she recommended me to another group to come and do a speak for them because she got what I was talking about, yeah. which I hadn't met her before that. Yeah. You know, it was, uh, this is, it's great how that works for sure. And do you belong to networks, uh, IRL, as we say, in real life? In real life, a little bit. Uh, yeah, um, I've, you know, I'm a, a member of a number of different uh, local organizations. Yeah. I'm on the board of director, uh, directors for several of them. Um, and so, you know, my business is at a place where it's much beyond where I live. Yes. So, uh, you know, I definitely get business from it, uh, but I look at it kind of more as my community service kind of thing. Absolutely. You know, like Absolutely. I'm a member of Rotary, for example. I'm a, I love Rotary, uh, but, but my Rotary club is filled with 80 to 90-year-old men. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I do networking for 
other reasons. For me, when I go to Rotary, it's my feel good time. Yeah. These guys are, I, I always say, I'm like, I've never, you know, I'm in a group every Tuesday when I go to these meetings, I'm in a group of the most amazing, kindest, nicest people that I know, and I leave just feeling really good. Oh, yeah. So they were all very, very successful business owners that have, you know, since retired and sold their business yeah. and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, networking in real life is really where it's at. And one of the things that I always talk to people about with social media, social media is a wonderful place to start to build relationships, but the real magic happens when you take that relationship offline. Absolutely. You, know, you can't always do that because I've got clients, you know, in the U.S., I've got clients overseas in Australia and Europe, uh, which I may or may not ever meet. Uh, but, you know, even video really adds that extra element, yep. right? Those yep. clients that you can't meet, I'm a little shy <laughs> on video. We're working on that. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing such said, a great job here. I had three uh, three interviews this morning, back to back. I was on CTV Edmonton uh, this morning, right before this. Oh, excellent! And the one after that, I said, you know, I don't like to put on makeup very often, so I put all my video stuff all in back one to back, to back to back. <laughs> well, now, see, that's efficiency. That is absolute efficiency. Yeah, first day of the week, putting makeup on. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it, it's true. I find that, um, you know, video, because I'm such a proponent of, of Google+, and, and, but the whole concept of, of video chats, this is a great way. It is, to me, the next best thing to being there. No question and, about Yeah, over time, it's actually proven in Google+, and even people in Facebook, and in some instances in LinkedIn as well, when you come to know people well enough, when you've spent enough time I'm in video chats with people you want to meet them in real life Absolutely. It, yeah it, yeah. it you, you want to make that extra connection oh no question about it I, I just attended social media camp in San or not social media camp that's where I'm speaking next week uh, social media marketing world in San Diego a couple yes. weeks ago yeah and it was interesting because I had so many people that have been connected to me online and following me online they're like Melanie I'm, I need to meet you when we're there and like all these people like just reached out to actually have that real life in person. Yeah, yeah, it's a, right. yeah. I was at an event last night. Same thing with people that you know I'm connected to uh, all around North America, and it's great to be able to finally get to touch them, if you will. Yeah. You know, have have that touch because it makes your next interactions all that sweet, more sweet. I think that social media has. Um, really in some ways negatively affected that in people's minds that they think that they can just create relationships online and they've yeah. forgotten about the importance of offline yeah. they've forgotten about the importance of you know taking a relationship to the next level yeah. and uh, it's really important to realize that you know social media is the ultimate tool for you know building those relationships and, and, and building that uh, that presence much larger than you ever could have before but as soon whenever you have that opportunity to take that relationship to the next level whether it's picking up the phone yeah calling that person or doing a video chat like this or meeting in in, in real life in person it's really important uh, an example of that is I had a guy that I was working with he lived in uh, one of my clients he lived in Calgary and we got him a lead for his business from one of the news anchors on the local TV show. Great lead through Twitter. Yeah. And um, we sent him the lead, and he he emails me back and says, Melanie, should I like DM them, direct message them, or tweet them back? I'm like, no. Oh. Pick up the phone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lead here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and that's that's a really really good point. The fact that we we have the opportunity for all these points of touch. Yeah. It's like don't leave anything out. And yeah. and you and I come from the relationship marketing aspect where I believe and I know you do as well. It's about community. It's not just about the social media, the the back and forth. It's about building your community. Yeah, I mean, and relationships only move to the next level when you take them to the next level, right? You can just be Facebook yeah. friends or Twitter friends or Absolutely. You know, forever, forever and never really move that relationship forward. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's a phone call or it was interesting. I had a guy that I connected with on, on LinkedIn and, and I'm starting to get uh, 
you know, dedicate a certain amount of time each week to just nurture and, and grow new relationships that our prospects, their, you know, possible connections. alliances and connections, yeah. right? Yeah. It was so amazing. We had this conversation yesterday. We know all the same people. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was just like, wow, this world is just so unbelievably small. When you have that commonality with people, right? Absolutely. When you've got something in common with them, we've got the same friends, we've got the same network. Who do you think the next time he has a conversation with somebody that says, I need somebody to help me with social media, he's going to be mentioning? Absolutely. That wasn't my intention. That wasn't no, my intention. No, no, no. It's just to get to know him, learn yeah. a little bit about his business, find out what he does, and see if you know there's ever somebody within my network that I can introduce him to yeah. or whatever. But you know, I know that what's going to come out of that. Absolutely. And um, I, I, I'm like you, and I, I, I do that, and I'm always, my, my first thing with people that I'm connecting with is, so what can I do to help you? Yeah. What can I do to help you? Because yeah. I'm going to share a funny, funny example. So this gentleman that I was talking about that I connected with uh, that called me yesterday and said, we want to hire you. This is what happened. We had our board meeting. The president, CEO, the stakeholders were all there. and they were Everybody was giving their opinion on who they should hire for social media. And, you know, I, I totally pushed you and whatnot. This guy, the way I met him was he had just recently gotten divorced about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And my friend Andrew, who passed away last year, um, his family lived out of out of the province, and I knew that these two guys had nowhere to go for Christmas. Oh. I invited them to my house for Christmas. So this guy's first impression of me was, she was the girl that invited me to her house for Christmas and fed me this yeah. great meal when I didn't have anybody else. Yeah. Just an example of you know the whole relationship aspect and how important it can be and what it can ultimately leverage. Five years later, now you know I'm going to have probably uh, a contract that's going to exceed six figures yep. from this one one nice thing that I did inviting somebody to my house for dinner for Christmas. Yeah. Um, and I mean, obviously, if I didn't have the credibility to back it up and whatnot, I would have lost that. But you know what I mean. It, it, it's those Absolutely. real life Absolutely. relationships, and this is what I do love about this. This, you know, this uh, hangouts and video chat and stuff like that. If I could just get past the fact that I don't, want, I like to work in my pajamas sometimes. <laughs> I like to put on makeup. Guess what? We can do that. Pajama <laughs> <laughs> pants on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from sure. from uh, as some of the guys say in video chats, it's like, well, from the waist down, I yeah, jammies or nothing, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so no, I'm gonna have you're gonna have to spend some time teaching me a little bit more about Google Hangouts. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm so happy to hear you say that because you know I've been dying to do this since <laughs> last year. The year before, no matter. You know, right from the beginning. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're going to start wrapping up now. This has been absolutely fabulous. Melanie, you are such a font of information and fabulous, fabulous information. Anybody, if you just implement one thing Melanie said today, I guarantee you, you are going to see changes on your LinkedIn profile. Having said that, what's one little tidbit you can offer, either personal or business, that people can implement right now today? Okay, so uh, I can't limit it to one. <laughs> Good. Yay! Yay! I can't limit it to one. But the one, first thing is when you're thinking about your keywords that you want to optimize your profile for, make sure you're not thinking in terms of you know what you put on your website necessarily. Think about in terms of what your ideal clients might be looking for when they're looking for what you offer. So, for example, um, you know somebody on LinkedIn might not be looking for uh, a brand strategy for their company, right? Or a social media strategy for their company. They might be looking for a social media strategist or a brand strategist or a marketing specialist or a marketing consultant or something like that. So understand that when people are looking on LinkedIn, they're looking for people, not things a lot of times. Absolutely. So while they might type in things and that's where all the other content in your profile comes into play where you talk about all the things you do. Right. But what you really want to optimize your profile for with the primary keywords is who you are, the title. Yes. And so if you're an owner and founder, scrap that. I'm the owner and founder of Top Dog Social Media. Nowhere in my profile will you see that. No. What I'll say is that I'm a social media speaker, a social media consultant, a social media trainer, a LinkedIn expert. You know, those are the things that I am because I know that those are the things people are looking for. They're not looking for the founder of Top Dog Social Media. 
So really think about that. The second thing is I talked earlier about you know making sure that your your profile is really client focused, and that in your summary section, you know you have do have to start off with telling people a little bit of information about you. So give them what I call your credibility paragraph. Share a little bit of information about you, and then go right into who is it that you work with and how do you help them. Yes, and start absolutely. To them so that when they read your profile, they can literally self-select. I also have a, a really handy little LinkedIn checklist that you can get and you can download it so that you can print it off and have it next to your computer as you're working through your LinkedIn profile. It's linkedinchecklist.com. Download that and as you're working through your profile, uh, you know, make sure that you're filling out all the different areas and optimizing all the different areas. That's uh, just a great little handy tool. Oh, that's excellent. And Melanie, I will be sure and put that under this video on Business Banter Plus on the page with Melanie so people can go there and get it later if they want to download it. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you in the fall. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. Yeah. And yeah, we have another video chat. Oh, oh I, yeah, I, look, <laughs> I look forward to that even more. And now you can't say you haven't done Hangouts, so we'll be doing this again very, okay. very soon. Thanks very much for tuning in, everybody. It's Elaine Lindsay with Business Banter Plus. Our next show is in two weeks. See you then. Bye-bye.